Hello, hello. Welcome to the 10th episode of the Play That Changed My Life uh, podcast brought to you by Harbinger Theater and OSM Studios. Uh, Really my elaborate excuse to get more theater in my life. Uh, We have two fantastic guests. I'm very excited to learn more about them today. Uh, We have Connie Lopez, who is an actor uh, who will be appearing in Ashena Madel uh, by Barbara LeBeau. Barbara LeBeau, yes. (gasps) And that's coming up um, next week at Classic Theater Guild. Uh, Connie is an artistic associate with Two of Us Productions, uh, and they're collaborating with um, Classic Theater Guild. Awesome. And Ryan Palmer, the man, the myth, the legend, (laughs) the funniest man in the Capital Region. (laughs) He is appearing in the minutes at Albany Civic Theater with a certain podcast host. And we have two more weekends uh, tonight through Sunday. uh, And then next uh, Friday through Sunday, March 1st through 3rd. Yes. Yes. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. uh, I was driving here and I was like, man, what a job. What a job I've created (laughs) for myself. Uh, looking forward to this conversation. So uh, to kick it off, uh, a couple articles in the New York Times, too, about the same subject matter. Michael Paulson and Jesse Green both wrote an article about uh, there are 18 shows opening on Broadway uh, between March and April of this year. Uh, in time for the Tony Awards deadline. And uh, whether that was too much or why does uh, Broadway backload all the shows? There, um, Over 30 shows will have opened uh, this year, but more than half of them are opening in the last two months of the year. Whether that was a good thing, uh, Jesse Green compared it to Christmas tree farms <laughs> <laughs> who, who only do business two months a year, uh, which is, I thought was rather amusing, uh, comparing Broadway to a Christmas tree farm. Um But uh, what do you think, Uh, or do you have plans on going down, or, yeah, you're going down. I'm going down. I'm going down, because we've talked about it. I really want to see The Patriots Yeah. by, um, oh my God, the guy who wrote The Crown. Can't think of his name. Peter Morgan. Peter Morgan, yeah. And, um, and and, you know, it kills me, because, you know, the musicals, they'll open and they'll run yeah, yeah, yeah. Years, two years, but plays, it's like, oh, this has got to be in and out in 10 weeks. Yeah. And if you miss it, you miss it. And um, yeah, that just breaks. Does it have a limited run? 12 weeks. Yep. Opens ooh, April 5th. And I think it said it's got to be done before June. Or and I'm so. telling Ryan, don't buy tickets. Don't buy tickets. <laughs> you can get them on TDF, the online website. Uh, Which I, I will be I, doing. I'm guaranteeing him. That that show will be online. I paid full price for the mother play, uh, Jessica Lang and Jim Parsons, at the Helen Hayes Small Theater. I, I I just didn't think it would show up on TDF, so I went full price. And then it did. No, no, oh, no, no. Oh, I gotcha. I don't know what's going to happen, but I splurged. I, I went uh, whatever it is. I think it was 140 bucks each for the last row in the theater. Why well, don't I, I got lucky because I splurged when I went to go see The Shark is Broken. And I said, I need my seats. I need to be close. I need to be on the aisle because I'm a big guy. I need to stretch out. Um, and then it was the weekend that the mudslide took out the track. So I had to call and I had to get, you know, change my tickets. And they said, well, you're in luck because next week is Shark Week. So every, <laughs> literally what the guy said to me, he said, so every ticket in the orchestra is $50. Oh. So I actually got like $120 back, same seats, and I said, oh, this is great. Thanks, Shark Week. Yeah. But, you know, and, but I think the original like I spent was like 130 for row yeah. M or something. But See, well, I always lucky. do TDF. Yeah. And because there's so much going on, I'm sure I'm going to yeah. find something I want to see. Right. Because there's so many things I want to see. Yeah. So. You know, and but uh, you know, I I say there is a certain level. What did we also buy full price for? I I think it was the Days of Wine and Roses. Big mistake. 
big mistake because it's discounted all the time now that it moved to Studio 54. You know, but you don't know it's going to move. And, right. you know, and at the time it was playing at the Atlantic. But, you know, we, we overspent by, you know, whatever, 70 bucks a ticket. You know, and uh, you're right, Connie. It's like, you know, by going to see these stars, you know, or people that you have to see, um, you know, it's a Paula Vogel play. We'll be able to get our hands on it, you know, and we'll be able to produce it mm -hmm. in a year, you know, but because it's Jessica Lang and Jim Parsons, you know, we, you know, went for the shiny package. Well, that's what's so interesting to me about The Patriot is, I mean, I know who Will Keen is. But he's not like a he's not Jim yeah. Parsons. Michael Stolberg. Stolberg, you know, I he was in Fargo and he was in Doctor Strange and that's all I've seen him in. Yeah, he was nominated for uh, Pillow Man, I believe. Oh, okay. I'm not sure he even won. <laughs> but um like really, but uh, he was also Emperor Boulevard or what was it? The... I don't even, see we don't even know because no. but it's like hundred and fifty yeah, yeah, for yeah. and I was like, okay, well no, wait. I know who wait, they are, but wait, wait, wait. Yeah, I'll, I'll be waiting. But if I miss it, I'm coming to your door. Please do. <laughs> okay. Please do, and we'll play a game. We'll play some Trivial Pursuit or something. Uh, excellent. Um, any plans to go down, Connie? Well, right now we're very busy. So yeah. between doing a Shana Madel up here, we're doing a repeat performance down in Copake, and we're already in the middle of auditioning for the next play that we're doing, which is um, It's Only a Play. Which opens right. in May, so we're kind of. And crazy. you're doing the updated one. Yes. Yeah, of yes. course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the the other one's thirty years old, and all the references. <laughs> right, a little old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, again, I think I paid full price for that. <laughs> Nathan Lane, uh, Matthew Broderick, Matthew Broderick, yes. Yes. Rupert Grant, Channing. Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, F. Murray Abraham, yeah. who allegedly. Brings his Oscar and hides it on every set that he performs on. Really? Have you heard this? No, I haven't, but yes. I believe it. Yes. Like, he's doing Merchant of Venice, and he has to have his Oscar somewhere on set. <laughs> That's odd, though, right? Because not only is that weird by itself, but it's like, you, you it, it, it's this really emotional piece, and yeah. you risk something happening to it. Yeah. You know, it's we should verify this. I think we may have to cut this out of the podcast. <laughs> but no, I, I, I I've seen that more than once that it's he strange. And I don't think it's like he has it in his dressing room. I think he hides, hides it on, it on set. the set. Yeah. Well, next time he's yeah. on Broadway, we'll have well, to go down and out. somebody yeah. may decide right. to go off with it. So anyway. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's exciting, you know, uh, spring in New York and 18 shows and, you know, uh, everybody wants, uh, you know, the Tony nominations and the great big boost that the Tony broadcast brings. Mm -hmm. Is that true? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, everyone's, uh, battling it out to last this summer. Um, we saw the news that, uh, Beautiful Noise is closing this summer. But, you know, things are opening in the summer now. Like last summer, Shark is Broken. Uh, Once yeah. Upon a One More Time. Uh, there, there were like six shows that opened in the summer, I think, yeah, last I year. I don't know if many of them lasted, but they definitely did open, I think, July. Is... Still, you know, you have choice. And, yeah. you know, the new plays in the summer in the city. That never happened, uh, you know, when I was living in the city. Uh, back in the 80s and you know there were like on the east side of 7th Avenue the Belasco the Lyceum the Court never used you know <laughs> there were years that would go by that the court wasn't used wow. you, you know and you would see like they would leave the old marquee up uh, Peter Strauss in Einstein and the Polar Bear was on the court <laughs> theater for years but uh, not the play wasn't running, <laughs> just the marquee. But yeah, I, it's like I don't think I was in the Belasco until, you know, uh, maybe Mark Rylance's company, uh, you know, with the Twelfth Night and oh, the, yeah. uh, Richard the mm Third, -hmm. he did. But I, I don't remember it ever being used. And maybe it was out of commission for a period of time. 
But yeah, I, I mean, there's so much going on. Um, I think, you know, it's very exciting uh, post-COVID. And they yeah. say the numbers aren't back, like 15% of the revenue isn't back. And I understand, even though, you know, I'm paying more for tickets than I ever had. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, but for everyone out there, uh, check out TDF, uh, Theater Development Fund, uh, online. They run the TKTS booth, which is lovely. But TDF online, you can buy your tickets in advance. They're cheaper than the booth. Uh, top price for Broadway is $59. You can, buy, you can find tickets to the Met. You can find tickets to the Apollo. You know, off-Broadway, all sorts of things. Uh, Jersey, Connecticut. But, um, yeah, you can get Broadway seats in advance and uh, it's a great, great, great resource. And, um, you know, uh, like Connie said, uh, you know, just put a date in there. Uh, I'm looking for March 6th, and it gives you like 20 options. You know, so, you know, you're not going to see uh, Jessica Lang and the mother play. But uh, Bedlam Theater Company is doing the assassination of Julius Caesar. And they are oh. smashing it up between Shakespeare and Shaw. Have you heard this? Yes. I have not. I'm yeah. Excited. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. But you know, I got to see John Lithgow and all my sons going through TDF. Yeah. So you'd be surprised what you can actually get tickets for. So many great things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Chris and I discovered Soho Rep, Rattlestick, mm -hmm. Rattlestick, uh, beautiful little theater. Uh, you know, like 80 seats, you know, and, and uh, they do these incredible shows. There, There's... Um, Dale Orlander Smith, a Pulitzer-nominated uh, playwright, it has a show going up there, uh, $15. Wow, $15. And, 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 and Rattlestick produced uh, The Aliens by Annie Baker. They produced um, uh, Lewiston Clarkston by Samuel Hunter. Uh, they produced uh, 3C by David Ajmi. Playwright of uh, Stereophonic coming to Broadway. Awesome play. Um, 3C is a retelling of Three's Company. Oh. I hadn't heard about that. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, what's his name? Larry? Uh, Tripper. What, Jack. 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 He's a Vietnam veteran, I think. Yeah, and it, it's, yeah. It's an awesome play. All right. Anything else about New York City? Fun in the city. Um, what's another cheap way? Today ticks. Today ticks are good. Today ticks. Okay. I don't use them very often. Do you have them? Have you used them? I was. I I like to have plans, so yeah. I I rarely like. Oh, I'm just gonna go. Yeah. Whatever well, happens, happens. Well, today. But I always do. <coughs> let's go. <laughs> uh, uh, despite their name, today ticks. You can buy them in advance. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. They do a lot of lotteries. I've never done the lottery either. Um, and I think every show on Broadway now has a lottery. Emily Bryan. She she keeps winning lotteries. Yeah. So she keeps going down. Yeah. I'm in the lottery for spam a lot. And I said, please take me. Yeah. And she didn't. So spam a lot's on TDF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've never done the lottery, which I, I would need to do for Merrily We Roll Along. Uh, you know. So anyway. All right, great. Let's talk about us. Okay. Capital Regions, where it's at. Um, but yeah, Capital Region's great because, you know, we're two and a half hours away. Chris and I go down and do two shows and come back the same day. It's a long day, but yeah, it's great. Um, Capital Region, Connie. Uh, so two of us productions. Tell me about two of us. Uh, it's you and Steve. Yes. Yes. We started about 20 years ago. Wow. Um, because we were both, well, he's a musician and a director. And I'm an actor, so we would spend, you know, 80% of our time being involved in theater and not being together, which we finally said, this is kind of silly. The summer that I spent most of the summer over in Connecticut doing Agnes of God, and he was over in Greene County conducting an orchestra for I forget what play, and I said, we have to stop doing it this way. So we decided to form the company, That's basically what we've been doing since. We still do things with other companies, but yeah, mostly together. That's nice. Yeah. 
That is not why Chris and I formed Harbinger. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that's great. That's great. Yeah. So 20 years now, and uh, I heard you talking about Copay Grange. Mm -hmm. um, wh where were you first performing? Has that like been a home base for you? Well, we've been we started actually performing in some of the school performing arts centers because they usually have really nice spaces. So yeah. yeah. We've performed in the Hudson High School's Performing Arts Center. We did, oh, I don't remember what we've done where now anymore, but we've done Superstore, we did Les Mis, we've done uh, Tale of Two Cities. We've, we used Taconic Hills Performing Arts Center, which is stunning. It was built in 2000. Um, so those shows we do in a large performing arts center. And then when we do smaller shows, it's the Grange, it's the library. Um, we've toured with some things. We, um, I think it was Sister Mary Ignatius, which is again dated now, so we don't, we wouldn't do it again. But we, we toured with that, so we perform all over. Yeah, fascinating. Um, I love the range of shows. Oh, really? Yeah, you, you're doing big, big musicals, um, and then small character plays. You've also done radio plays. Uh, did that start with the pandemic, or were you doing that beforehand? Yeah. It started with actually. Yeah. It was one of our advisory board members who said, "You know, rather than not doing anything, why don't we just start doing radio plays?" He said, it'll keep us busy. And he said, I'm sure that there's an audience. And it's great. We've got a following now that, you know, shows up. We've been doing Christmas Carol every year now. I think we started that in 2000. Um, maybe, not, yeah, 2000 we started. Not 2000, 2020. And then uh, we started Suspense Theater. So we we were doing them initially every other week, which got to be crazy. <laughs> I think the first year we did something like 50 plays. Now we do it every three weeks and generally a shorter run, you know, January through March. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I was never really into podcasts um, until, you know, we're driving down in the city every week, every other week, and the podcast really makes the time go by. Uh, I, you know, instead of listening to the classic rock or your Broadway <laughs> station, I, I was like, oh, you know, uh, I was like, wow, we, we've already been... Uh, you know, we're in Poughkeepsie already. Um, great. Uh, so now you're um, in the uh, Albany or Schenectady. Um, have you uh, performed in the, um, say, Albany, Schenectady, Troy? Not me. Um, I, this is the first time I'm perf performing up here. Um, That's great. I generally perform down by us, or like I said, Connecticut. I used to perform a lot in the Woodstock area with New York Conservatory for the Arts, yeah. down in Poughkeepsie with New Day, and then in New York City, some off-Broadway stuff. So I've been all over the place. This is the first time up here. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that's exciting. I love to see companies working together, and mm -hmm. uh, you and Steve are so great. Uh, you know, I love seeing uh, your work that comes out, even though I don't make it to it much. I did review the one murder mystery, which I thought was really cool. The one we did at the library? Yeah. Yes. yes yeah, what was the name of that? Is that Karaoke Killer? No. No. Um, uh, oh, Oriental Rug? No. No. Not either. I don't remember now. <laughs> we have like a huge. Yeah, it was. It was. It was, it was. Uh, it was the neighbor and. Um, oh, oh, I know. You're talking to Stranger in the Attic. Yeah, oh, yeah. Stranger in the Attic. Yes. Yeah, it, it was a neat play. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I was like surprised. I'd never heard of it, although the title seems familiar to other things. But. Well, it's interesting. Uh, it's written by John K Kasich. And um, we found out about the play because he sent it to us. Oh, He had seen that we were producing and we right. produced a lot of new things. And he sent us his other play, which was, uh, I think, The Servant's Last Serve, which was a comedy, but we weren't really into doing a comedy right then. And then he sent us this, and we were like, oh, very interested. We really yeah. liked it. Yeah. The twists were interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. Nice job. Uh, Ryan Palmer. Where did you go to school? I went to Troy High, Flying and, Horses. And did you mean college? <laughs> no, I know you went to New Paltz. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> did you meet Barbara Davis? Yeah, she was uh, my theater teacher from being freshman, you know, all the way through, and she directed all but one show that I was in for the entire time, and I was in all of them. But what did you do in high school? Oh my gosh. So we did, um, freshman year, we did Curious Savage by John yeah, yeah. Patrick. 
um, which was my first show ever. And I had determined, I said, you know, if I don't get into this show, I'm going to go play lacrosse and that's going to be my life. So didn't have to do that. Um, when we did Music we, Man. We might have lost him to r- lacrosse. What would have. You would have. I'd be in Europe Great right now. <laughs> Throwing things, whatever they do. Um, then sophomore year, we did a weird adaption of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes for the play. It was very strange. Play. Play, yeah. And it was, it was fun. Um, followed by Hello, Dolly. And then my junior year, we did The Bad Seed, which was, that was a lot of fun. That was like the first serious thing I'd ever done, um, followed by Once Upon a Mattress, which was my first lead in a musical because I played the Silent King. <laughs> and they wrote that on the call sheet. It was, you know, the guy's name is King Sextimus. It was Ryan Palmer as King Sextimus and in bold and underlined, The Silent. I was like, thank you. And then um, (laughs) senior year, we did Harvey, where I was Dr. Chumley, which was a lot of fun. And then Anything Goes that Barb did not direct because she was head of the uh, English department at that time. And she's like, I can't do all this. Yeah. So and then I graduated and went on my life. Excellent. Uh, And uh, down to New Paltz and then up here to conquer the capital region. Yeah. Uh, and I saw you in your first with the, the aforementioned classic theater guild, an adaptation of A Christmas Carol, where Ryan was the ghost of Christmas past? I was present. 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 Yeah. And uh, he had a nice long flowing robe. And to take Scrooge on his journey, they played Magic Carpet Ride. He loves this story. He loves it. I love it. It was the funniest thing. I, the play was moving along in a familiar Christmas Carol way. And then I, my eyes almost fell out of my head. <laughs> With Ryan shimmying and shaking to uh, Steppenwolf. I love it. Uh, they played Magic Carpet Ride. For uh, for his transition, uh, yeah, is the funniest thing I've seen. I was the first one, first of just a few plays. Yeah, yeah, you like working. I do, I do. It's uh, how long ago was that? That was I uh, fifteen. Yeah, because I graduated in two thousand fifteen, and I came up, and I saw the almost ten uh, years. Almost, yeah, man. <laughs> But yeah. yeah, that was the first one, December 2015. And I've since seen Ryan at Sand Lake Center for the Arts, Schenectady Civic Players, Albany Civic Theater. Is this your first at all? Second, second. First one was Perfect Arrangement last year. Right. Yes. Awesome. And uh, bouncing around, HMT, Homemade Theater, with Diane for the Mouse Trap. That was a lot. That was a lot of fun. That was a nice serious. Because I played Trotter in The mm-hmm. Mousetrap, which... Have you done Not So Common? I've tried to. They won't take me. <laughs> and you haven't done Slock, right? I've tried to. They won't take me. <laughs> they will, please. Please. Um, do you have an ambition? Uh, I, I think... I don't know that I was conscious on my part to work with every company in the Capital Region. <laughs> um, as I, You know, I'm not... I'm not you know, ticking off a sheet or anything, but every time they, they there's know. a sense of accomplishment. Yeah. Oh, my first yeah. time. Oh, I'm making my debut. I do. I do like the debut making. That's fun. And, 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 you know, those opportunities are slowing down as you keep making more. <laughs> Just went into Jiminy Glick voice. <laughs> Your debut. <laughs> but, you know, because, you know I, I don't do a whole lot of musicals in general. Um, just because, you know, sometimes they're doing Mean Girls or School of Rock, and it's like, oh, well, okay. Um, but, yeah, you know, I'd like to slide into Slock and Not So Common. And Brian's uh, done some professional work uh, in the summer. Um, he, uh, I saw him at the late Lamented Theater Barn in Fully Committed and uh, an Agatha Christie uh, what the heck was that called? Fiddler's Three. Fiddler's Three, her last play. I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. It, it was a... It's f- not done often. For 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 good reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. It was, it was fun. Um, not a yes. great 
And well written. Last summer, you were in uh, something rotten at yep, Sharon. Uh, Sharon Playhouse. Yeah, yeah. That was that was incredibly validating. As I'm sure, you know, because because it was it was professional house, and you know there were people who were on Broadway, and you know, Stephen Schwartz came to the show, and Kevin Bacon came to the show. You know, all these these major players and it's like oh and I said oh you're you're funny good for you kid and I was like oh thank you you know um you made Kevin Bacon laugh I did I did <laughs> six degrees of separation there were six well, degrees see, of I Kevin figured, Bacon I'm I'm Ryan I, I can, I'm five degrees to Patrick Stewart right because I did something rotten with wonderful actress named Jen Cody who was married to Hunter Foster who was the brother of Sutton Foster who did Music Man with Hugh Jackman, who did X-Men with Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen. So we're very close to being best friends. I know it. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ryan. Um, let's talk about your current projects. Uh, Shana Madel. What does that mean? It means a pretty girl. And uh, tell us about the play. What happens in the play? It's a fascinating play, actually. It's, um, you have to be prepared for an emotional roller coaster ride, but uh, it's about a family that was separated during um, World War II, actually before World War II, before the Depression. Uh, father, they're living in Poland. Father tries to get them out. The older daughter uh, gets scarlet fever, so she and the mother stay behind. The father and the younger daughter go to America, and then because of the Depression, he won't borrow the money to get the wife and the daughter out, so they end up in the concentration camps. Uh, and the only person who survives is the daughter, who had been married, um, and she's, she arrives when she arrives in America, she's desperately looking for her husband. She got separated during the, uh, the camps. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. Yeah. It has a, a bittersweet kind of happy ending. Yeah, but uh, it's it's really a story about people and relationships and m mistakes and what you can make up for and atone for and what you can't and and how people survive. It's about the resilience, I think, of the human spirit. It, it's really a beautifully written play. Um, awesome. And we're lucky we have a really nice group of actors. Who's that? who do you have? We have Matt Leinung, who probably has not been performing up. He's a doctor from Albany Med. Oh. Really talented. Um, Carissa Payson, also a younger woman, uh, very talented. We've been working with her since she was in high school doing Shakespeare. Um, Christine Vermillier, which people up here would Christine, know. Yep. She's playing um, the best friend, and brilliant. Um, Debbie Lombardi is playing the mother, who I think you probably know. Yes, very and well. Ken Goldfarb Barb. is playing the father. Love Ken. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Who's directing? Steve. Steven Great. Sanborn. Excellent. Um, uh, how'd you come across the play? Or, uh, the play's been around for a while. Yes, it it's has. It's actually pretty popular. I think it was made into a TV movie with Kira Sedgwick. Oh. Yeah, separation from Kevin Bacon. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, actually, I came across it a long time ago. Um, one of my acting coaches, somebody I was actually studying Shakespeare with, who had said, this is a really good play for you. You should do it sometime. And then Shadowlands down in Ulster County, a small professional company, was doing it, and they cast me. Um, so I had done it then, and then I said to Stephen, someday maybe we should think about doing this. So you've worked at Shadowlands? Yes. Uh, with Brendan? Brendan Burke. He was my teacher in... Oh, yeah, I love yeah. Brendan. I love yeah. Brendan. Yeah. I, I perf I'm trying to think of what... I think I performed with him in the stuff we did the, for the Kennedy Center, I think. And he directed us in something else. I can't remember what now. Ages ago. Won't tell you how long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I saw... We like to go to... And I think that's a very cool space, Shadowlands. And now they've got the second space. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, which is cool. Yeah. We saw 39 Steps there in a strange play, a crossword play, mm -hmm. which was all about building a crossword puzzle. And it was a one-man show. And oh, They do yeah. some really interesting things. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And I'd worked with TriArts before they moved to Sharon Playhouse. <laughs> so I had done some of the work. That, that was in Pine Plains at the time. So Mary Tyler Moore came to see that one. Oh. So it's <laughs> two degrees from Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but that was good. I got to meet some really neat people. And um, I'd done a number of things. We did Annie Get Your Gun, um, Sound of Music. Um, I can't remember what else. Oh, uh, Pajama Game. I played Gladys in that one. So they, then, then they moved. Yeah. So. <laughs> Great. Uh, and Ryan... You are currently working on The Minutes. Yes. By Tracy Letts, Pulitzer and Tony nominated. Great play, great play. Yeah. Tell us about it. Okay, I'll, I'll just try to remember what Brian said last time. and, and um. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> um, this is The Minutes podcast. <laughs> yeah. I um, mean, you know, it's, it's, it's funny till it's not. Um, you know, it's, it's about this... We haven't really determined if it's a small town council or whatever we decided, but it's it's a ten person city council, and there's the new guy who is trying to break through, make his mark, and they seemingly talk about nothing for fifty minutes. It's you know I've got my thing with oh we need an accessible fountain, Gary Hoffman who was beyond hysterical as the old man goes on about, I need a better parking space. Aaron Moore, who is hysterical, goes on about, oh, well, we should have this thing where you can fight Abraham Lincoln in the park. So it's just, it's just nonsense. All the while, uh, the new guy, Mr. Peel, played by um, Kevin O'Toole, in his first play play, I believe, because um, I know he's mostly musicals. Um, is that true? It might be, but... Don't sue me for libel yes. if it isn't. Yes, so we'll have to make some corrections, whether F. Murray Abraham hides his Oscar or whether Kevin O'Toole is actually his first play. Um, I did not know that. I'm like 90%. All right, all right. Um, but he is awesome. He's incredible. And you know his character is, is the new guy. He's missed a meeting, and suddenly, oh, we don't have the minutes for the last meeting. And this other city councilman is gone, and no one will talk about it. And people are actively avoiding talking about it. And so we find out until yeah, what happens with that. And um, more is like, revealed. Like we've been saying for the last two months with this with the promos and when it's funny, right up until it not. not. And when it stops being funny, it stops being funny. Yeah. And it's um, great cast, great. Yeah, and it, I think it was a surprise to the cast uh, how it's being received by the audience. Kind of surprising to me. I don't know. I but, knew it would be oh, yeah. loved. I knew it. I just oh, knew. <laughs> Confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because uh, we're, we're getting huge laughs from the preview. I, uh, do you, um, how do you feel about free previews, Connie? Do you do them or do we two don't, of us? We don't do them mostly because we have very small audiences to begin with. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> It, it could really eat away into the audience because it's a small, we're in small spaces. When right. we do things like the larger musicals, right. we sometimes will have somebody. But Right. Uh, and you're, you're in a different community, right? So, you know, if your pool of audience members is, you know, it's limited, yeah. then uh, I understand. Uh, um, I am a huge fan of uh, Pay What You Will previews. Yeah. Uh, I just think it gets the show off to a rock and start. I think the audiences are primed and they're happier because they haven't paid. Um, and, and they're more responsive. They, you, we, there's a supportive vibe. Yeah. And I think the Capital Region, uh, there are a number of houses that do the Pay What You yeah. Will preview. SLOC does it. SCP does it. ACT does it, um, and it Harbinger, just Harbinger Harbinger will it. always do it. And I know yours are usually on the la the ones that I've been to have been on Wednesday, which is so convenient because yep. that's like, oh well, we're not yeah. going to rehearse Wednesdays. So I, was like, yeah. Great, I can actually, go. yeah, they, and that goes to different scheduling, which mm -hmm. was uh, a topic of conversation recently. Always, <laughs> um, but you know, scheduling shows, and I, I'm all for that too. Because we were talking, uh, there are like eight shows opening this weekend, you know. Um, there is Lost in Yonkers that's uh, finishing its run. Fool for Love running one weekend only. Peter Pan running for two weekends at Homemade Theater. Minutes is uh, continuing its run. Uh, missing something. Um, yeah. But, uh, uh, you know, so if we had... 
a Saturday matinee, which I'm going to see Peter Pan at, or Sunday evening show, or Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. You know, we have Wednesday shows because at the barn, um, you can't do matinees because they have the skylight. Oh. So you can't control the light. So we do Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Um, when we do uh, St. Rose Theater, we're going to have Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So, we're, you know, that gives us a matinee, but it also takes away the Wednesday preview. We'll have a Thursday preview. But anyway, the pay what you will preview, I, I, I think is, you know, I, I just love it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and Albany, uh, you know, for the production of the minutes, it proved to be true. Mm -hmm. We had, uh, I don't know, 45 people. Um, and, and Kevin, possible more liable. I don't know. Uh, Kevin McNamara said that it was you know, in in the box was something like three hundred dollars. Oh, really well, nice. we do like really reduced group rates, you know, and we send that yeah. out to the schools so that's even less than the the, the ch children senior rates to try to encourage that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, but yeah, it, it kicks the show off oh, yeah. and and gives the, uh, you know, so opening night was kind of like we were already, yeah. you know, rocking and rolling. We were kind of like, you know, <laughs> that was an easy house last night. They laughed less <laughs> you know? on opening night. Yeah, it, but then we had them back. It's, it's yeah. Saturday, actually, um, this play also Sunday was kind of quiet and then there was a there's you know moments where they just started coming along with us yeah. you know the, i creepy. think the recreation kind of like push them over the edge and say, oh. <laughs> yeah, and that my, my mother, because she, she'll she always give me like a, a little rundown of what she liked, what she didn't. She said, I didn't really get the recreation, why it was so much, but I thought it was funny as hell. Well, can I say that? I don't know if I can say that. Um, funny <laughs> yeah, you can say it. And so, you know, you know, whether or not people think it's necessary. Because when I first read it, I'm like, this goes, this this little, because they recreate the, the battle that mm -hmm. their town is formed on. And when I first read it, I said, all right, this may be a little too long. Maybe, maybe just too much silliness. Because it does, you know, we, we, before it, it is, like I said, nonsense. They're just rattling off about nonsense. But it's serious nonsense. And this recreation is serious nonsense. Silly, you know. We're running around. We're screaming. We're making sounds. Patrick rides a broom. <laughs> like, all right. Yeah, man. It, it, yeah, it's the creation myth. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah. Uh, pay what you will preview, and uh, so the minutes. Uh, uh, your second show at Albany Civic yep. Theater, and um, uh, I'm in it. Um, it's a cast of 11, 11 of us, and, uh, yeah. directed by Brian Sheldon running, uh, next weekend. Yeah. And we're having a blast. Um, we've gotten six reviews, all really good for the production. Uh, some reservations about the play, yeah, but, which... uh, excellent, excellent, uh, reviews and, uh, great houses. Uh, we're looking to continue the party. Um, looking this morning, Sunday, Sunday looks to be a nice chunky house. Chunky house. Chunky, chunky yeah, house. Like yep. Yeah. Can That's, I borrow that? You can, you can, you can borrow it. Go ahead. Yeah. And we got a talk back on Sunday, which yeah. Ryan said he was a little nervous about. <laughs> have you done talkbacks? I have not recently, but I love them. I always love I to do hear too. what the audience has to say and the questions they come up with. Yeah. Chris hates me uh, <laughs> because he like, we'll be in New Haven. We'll go to Yale and they'll have a talk back. And he's like, oh, you know, because I'm staying, I, you know, it's like I paid and this is like my added bonus, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, th this is whatever, you know, free whipped cream on top of my Sunday, you know, that I'm always up for a uh, talk back. I think, it, it, you know, it, again, if I can get more theater in my life, you know, I, I'm all for it. Um, and Ryan had reservations about the talk back coming up. We have one on Sunday yeah. with the chunky audience. Why? Chunky audience. Why do you have reservations? Well, there are, you know, there were there were three things in the play that our director, Brian Sheldon, said, you know, don't 
we're not talking about this. This is what you think it is. It's a comedy. Until it's not. But it's suspenseful. And, and then it's horrific. And, and there's, there's three things that, that he said, you know, this is what everyone's going to leave with. But don't tell anybody because it'll, it'll ruin the experience. And I agree. And <laughs> that's going to be the three things this chunky audience is going to ask. And so, you know, we're going to have to be like, well, what do you think? For, you know, all 11 of us, for all 15 people who are going to ask that question, well, what do you think? And it's like, I, you know, I don't, I don't know if they'll leave happy, you know, at that point because they'll, they'll want to know. But will they be questioning? That's, that's important too. They will be, yes, yeah. yeah. And, um, but I like, I like answers, right? So, so if I was sitting there and I'd say, Patrick, what about da-da-da? And he said, what do you think? I'd be like, all right then, well. <laughs> you would hate the table. Huh. I'd, ha- I'd hate you. I'd be like, all right. You'd then. hate me. I'd hate you. <laughs> well, see, I like that. I want to like think about all the possibilities. I really, uh, Harbinger loves talkbacks. We do talkbacks every Friday. Uh, every single per- Friday performance, we've had a talkback. I think that if you're picking a provocative play, minutes. Yeah. That, um, that you should give the audience the opportunity you know, you're free to leave, mm-hmm. but you should give them the opportunity to respond, yeah. you know, and, and to share that with your community, you know, and I think, it, you know, it builds and bonds and, um, you know, and you get to hear firsthand um, whether the play worked for them or not, right. you know, right. and what your impact has been. Connie, can you remember a talk back that you really loved? It was um, when I was doing Agnes of God. Yeah. And I played Agnes, so this is a while ago. And I remember being able to really talk about what it must have been like for people. And because, let's face it, there are people that are suffering from abuse all over the place. They're not all in facilities. They're out there in pain. And it really opened up the opportunity for people to talk about that, talk about how they could relate to the character, talk about how those experiences had changed them and what they needed to do to overcome it. And I just find, and that's what I love about theater. You know, it can help you have realizations. It could help you feel things. It could help you heal. And that was the most meaningful that, that I can remember right now. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I, I was uh, talking about the talk back uh, I had for doubt at Berkshire Actors Theater a um, number of years ago, and uh, there was an audience member that was quite angry with Father Flynn, and uh, he wanted to know, did you do it? Uh, did he uh, molest uh, the little boy, um, Mueller? Um, and uh, I was like, <laughs> a little taken aback. I had a definite answer for my character, uh, but my director and the cast never asked. <laughs> You know, but I was not going to answer. Um, I don't think I ever, I, I, maybe it crossed my mind, just tell him. And I was like, no. I was like, you can't say what Father Flynn's truth is. Because, and it's such a tricky play. Um, because, you know, whether Philip Seymour Hoffman or Brian O'Byrne, who created it, uh, many people thought they had different answers to that question, uh, or may, or they speculated. Mm-hmm. You don't know. I don't think I've ever heard uh, either of them yeah. Yeah. state that. Uh, but yeah, I said, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I can't answer that. And he goes, you have to tell me. And I was like, you know, the name of the play is Doubt. <laughs> um, and, uh, and truly, why Father Flynn capitulates to Sister Aloysius, I think, is because uh, everyone has a past, which I told him. Father Flynn has done something, and he knows that she will get to it, whatever it is, whether it's uh, Mueller or something else. And, um, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, I talk back. So I can't wait. <laughs> and, you, you know, uh, there are, what, there are 12 of us. You know, if we don't bring the technical staff on hand, yeah, if we bring Regina and uh, Cassidy and Quinn uh, up on stage, there's going to be like 15 of us. Yeah. 
See, actually, now you got me thinking. I'll see if I could suggest that we do one. <laughs> I think you should. I think we should, too. Yeah. Especially with that play, yes. I think. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see a talk back. I'll put the bug in everybody's ear. I went to a talk back yesterday. Um, well, it wasn't a talk back. The uh, Shakespeare and Company oh. is doing a residency at Hudson Valley Community College, mm-hmm. and they do it for I don't know fourteen years. They've been doing it. Um, that um, you know, this is uh, the kids' week off, uh, President's Day, or whatever, the midwinter break, and uh, they did Midsummer Night's Dream with seven actors. And uh, then they had a brief talk back with the audience. And they started their talk back. Uh, all seven actors had a statement. And they wanted the audience to stand up, whether they agree uh, wholeheartedly or give waffle hands, whether they somewhat agreed or sat silently, whether they uh, didn't agree at all. And um, hmm. the statements were like, um, pain is funny. Uh, Mr. Palmer, our, our genius of humor. Pain is funny. How do you feel about that? I mean, physical pain. We're having a talk back on the, po- talk on the podcast. I mean, you know, like when I was doing Moonlight Magnolias yeah. and, you know, we slid on the banana peels and yeah. went through the cardboard box. That's funny. funny. But if you're doing like wit. And like the woman is is it's a different kind of dying. Pain. It's a different kind of pain. Yeah. So it's, I, guess, I guess like external pain. In so, a yeah. It's, so 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 if that's brought up in a talkback, interesting question, right? Yeah, because uh, about it's what you just saw in Midsummer Night's Dream. Another statement <laughs> was, um, "There are no villains in this play." Yeah, I don't think there's any villains. I I would agree. I think okay, so you're both flawed people. Stand up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and, and I saw a talk back. Um, this is I I was doing doubt again. Uh, I was not driving at the time. I was staying at my aunt and uncle's house in Pittsfield, and I uh, had a bike loan, and I rode my bike to Chester Theater Company, uh, which is beyond Jacob's Pillow. So I don't know what that is, like 20 miles or something. Yeah. And um, I went to go see Rahiv Joseph's uh, Animals Out of Paper. They had a matinee and they had a talk back. I had a performance in Pittsfield that night. And I'm sitting there at the talk back, you know, and the, and the former artistic director of Chester held an awesome talk back by him. Stevens, I believe his name is. And he used to ask the audience, and he developed this whole community of uh, theater goers in Chester um, through a lot of it was through talkbacks because he, he, and like everybody stayed. And he would say, like, what do you see when you come into the theater? And they'd all talk about the set and they'd talk about, you know, what the design elements were and things like that. And it was just great. Anyway, I was almost late. For that night's <laughs> performance, I came pulling in at ten after seven. Uh oh, <laughs> no cell phones at the time. And barely a man. What time was curtain? Seven thirty. Oh, ah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was uh, working under an equity contract, so I was only ten minutes late. No. Um, <laughs> all righty. Uh, so that's the talkbacks and uh, show times. Um, collaborations how do you uh steve directed for um classic uh, broken glass by arthur miller um what uh, led him to work outside the company outside of two of us oh, i think um we're always interested in seeing what other people are doing what what their venues are like how things are happening and collaborating with people you know you yeah. get great new ideas by working with people yeah. outside of your own company so they had been advertising for directors and he ended up applying we he directed for rpi the same way you know he'd seen that they were looking for directors we knew the person who was the musical director so it, it's an opportunity to meet new actors yeah new directors technical people get some ideas 
get to do things again if you yeah. want to try to do the same show that you've done before and do it in a different way. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and uh, now you're collaborating with them. Is it, um, uh, you know, are you splitting production costs or is it, is it just... Well, they're actually producing, so they're handling production costs, you know, the scripts, the the rights to the play. We've done things like brought up lighting, done a lot of the costuming. Actually, the, the whole cast has done a lot of the costuming, but I've brought up a lot of, a lot of costume pieces. We've brought up most of the um, props for the show, but they're building the sets. So it's, it's really a yeah. collaboration. Yeah. You know, Great. We're all doing what we do best, basically. Great. Awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited to see it. Um, you know, the we were talking earlier, uh, P- Picasso at the La Pina Gil, uh, Classics last production, had really good audiences. Um, I think, uh, you know, we've, Classics had some, um, you know, uh, struggles uh, with, uh, you know, production, where they are. Uh, so it's good to see. I- I'm glad Glad you're there. Uh, Mr. Palmer, we heard uh, two of us productions' future plans. Do you have anything in the hopper that you care to share with the class? <laughs> uh, well, you know, I've, uh, I'm auditioning for um, Play It Again, Sam at SCP with Evan Jones directing. And then, as you know, I had my, my call back for uh, Sharon Playhouse for the prom. And uh, yeah, I'm just yeah. gonna see. So, what fingers what crossed. Very good. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Uh, so now we come to the uh, time in the broadcast, the podcast, where we talk about the play that changed my life. Connie. That's tough. Because I know it's tough. Two right at the same time. <laughs> there are dozens. <laughs> All right, so I have to pick. I guess West Side Story. You can do two. Okay, then I will tell you both. Sure. (laughs) Uh, We have ten minutes. West Side Story and Agnes of God. Okay. Similar but different reasons. West Side Story, because up until then, all I had been seeing in terms of musicals was like fluffy stuff you'd see on TV, you know, like Doris Day and things like that. Mm -hmm. And West Side Story was about people, people that I can imagine knowing, people that had real issues that I was used to seeing, and. and it was beautiful, beautifully done. The music was beautiful. It was just um, made me realize how much theater can actually do in terms of the human condition. Not just I love I love acting, so you know obviously I get a lot out of doing that. But but it's what theater can actually do to transform people's lives. So that was that. And the other was Agnes of God, and we talked a little bit about that before. But usually when you think about somebody who has mental health issues you think of what people portray on tv and they're crazy and they're killing people and they're doing all these horrible things and here's this poor soul that had been tormented you know her whole life and how people could act in the audience who've had issues that were similar could react to it and my own past i could relate to things that had happened and how it 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 makes you realize important things in your own life how you can make it different how what happened to you made you who you are and how you survive, and how you have survived, and the fact that you can survive things like that. So that's what really made me develop an even further love of theater. It's not just about performing, it's about what it can do, what it can do to your life and everybody else's. So. Great, yeah, and how it can change your life. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Uh, thanks so much. Ryan? I also have two. I'll talk for the, for the fast stories. I'm gonna have to change the name of the podcast. You might have to. You might have to. Um, the first one is is the producer's musical. I had seen that musical, and I can't even tell you why or where it was. But between eighth grade and and high school, I had seen it in July, and I said, I want to do what they're doing. So then the next day, I got on the phone to um, the guidance office and said, I would like to take a theater class when I get to high school next year. Can I do that? And they said, sure. And that's when I met Barb and started this whole thing. Uh, Because, you know, the character of Bialystok is so funny and so ridiculous. And And I said, I want to do that. So that was play number one that got me on the road. You saw it. 
I saw it. I couldn't. It was Broadway. Some, no, it was somewhere in Massachusetts. And okay. I, 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 again, I can't tell you why I was out there, why I saw it, because I had no idea, you know, because um, we weren't we weren't like a musical family. Um, but I was there. And just I, something to do. Just yeah. But of course, I was I was in eighth grade, so I was like, you know, I I couldn't bring myself, so I couldn't tell you why. But here I am, twelve year old, saying I want to play yeah. that unpleasant <laughs> fifty year old <laughs> producer. Um, and then it was it makes uh, perfect sense to me, doesn't it though? Uh, and then it's actually um, Moonlight Magnolias by Sky, directed by Sky Vogel out in the theater yeah. barn. It was like my first lead in a professional play, and you know we almost filled the house every night. And just you know the the reaction of that, I said, okay, this is something that I can do and do well forever. So that that right there kind of cemented that. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna chase this, and whatever happens happens. And so far, it's been doing fine. But that's excellent. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. I knew it from the Ghost of Christmas Present. <laughs> um, thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, I saw that Moonlight in Magnolias. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Fantastic. Um, so uh, I'm kind of like, uh, what are we talking about now? <laughs> we, we, we've covered everything. Uh, let's give final dates again. Uh, Shana Madel. Shana Madel opens February 29th. We run for two weeks, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Thank oh, you. No, they're not Friday. Oh, my goodness. No. Thursday, no, no. Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> Please don't come on Friday. Yeah, <laughs> it's Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Excellent. Uh, and it's only a play? It's only a play. It will be in May. It will be at the Clafrick Library. And I can't remember the dates. Okay. No problem. May. <laughs> it's coming up. It's May. Coming up May. Yeah, you can check our website, www.thetwoofusproductions.org. Excellent. Mr. Palmer. Um, the Minutes continues its three-week run tonight at 7.30, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 7.30, 7.30, 3 o'clock. Correct. And then March 1st, 2nd, 3rd, same times. Yep. Um, AlbanyCivic.org? Okay. Just Google Albany Civic. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, find one of our reviews. There's like seven of Daily them. Daily Gazette, Saratogian, Nippertown. Um, yeah, and Harbinger is producing uh, In the Blood by Pulitzer winner Suzanne Laurie Parks, uh, directed by T.J. Collins. It's going to be at the St. Rose Theater March 15th through March 24th. March 14th is the free preview night. Uh, March 15th and 22nd are the talkbacks. And March 16th is a farewell to St. Rose night. Uh, we will be the last production performing in the St. Rose Theater um, as the college closes down um, coming this June. Um, and, um, you know, I, I was thinking about it this morning. We're doing a play about an unhoused woman in uh, on a campus that will soon have 87 buildings uh, up for uh, habitation, uh, but uh, you know uh, that there are unhoused people in Albany, uh, which has 700 abandoned buildings. Mm. You know <laughs> that that we have theater companies looking for a space that uh, you know um, it's kind of makes you scratch your head. Uh, the play is more about um, it's Suzanne Laurie Park's uh, take, updated version, riff on um, Hawthorne's Scarlet Letter. Uh, the woman is Hester. She has five children from five different fathers. And uh, the actors who play the five children also play the five forces in her life. Uh, her social worker, her best friend, her reverend, her doctor, 
Um, and it sort of takes, um, you know, what Hawthorne was saying about Puritan society, and it asks us what are our attitudes towards the unhoused population, and uh, what are we uh, feeling or saying or seeing? Um, do we make moral judgments on those who are uh, without housing? So uh, it's a great play, and it's incredibly theatrical. Uh, Nicole Dama Paletto, Paletto is um, playing Hester, and we have Zach Kaiser, Alia Al Fuhed, uh, Dalton Russell, um, Tyler Cardona, and Monet Thompson Young. I got it all. <laughs> Whenever I start listing a cast, I'm like, you are a brave man. <laughs> I'm like, get halfway through, and I'm like, keep going, keep going. I, I was telling you last week, I listed the cast in the minutes, and uh, I started listing character names. And I was like, oh, now you're really, now you're really out on the edge. Uh, it's all, you know, like, testing my... I got you. Yeah. See if I still got it. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. For coming to this, uh, and getting more theater in my life. Uh, um, uh, I really appreciate it. And thank all of you for listening, watching, um, and we'll see you again. Uh, I hope to see you in a theater soon. Uh, thanks very much. 